Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Thanks a bunch for stopping by, I do appreciate it. Today's beer, we're going to do another Ren House Brewing. This is their Dreamy Draw. Now, these guys are out of Arizona. Uh, again, we did one yesterday. No ABV or any pertinent information on the can label. Uh, doesn't tell us what hops they've used. Uh, it says drink by 0726 of 21. And today is the 17th. So, uh, barely under the wire on this one. So, I don't know what kind of shelf life they give these. Three, four, five, six months. I don't have any idea what this brewery does. Breweries do different things. That's why this guy likes to see the can on date. So, I know how old it is. These best by, best before by day, used by, whatever by dates. You don't know. You don't know what the brewery is giving their shelf life to their beer. So. With that being said, this was sent to me by Neil. Neil, thanks a bunch. I do appreciate it, sir. Uh, th this one, according to Beer Advocate, it says it's no longer being brewed. So evidently they did it again, and nobody's updated that site. Imagine that. Uh, over to Untap, they listed as 8% where Beer Advocate doesn't have any ABV listed, and it's not on the can label anywhere. So another thumbs down for the information that these cats at the rent house is doing for their labels I don't see how they stay in business uh, not just them but a lot of others that refuse to put ABV on their can so you know what you're buying I don't understand that at all it blows my old mind uh, you go in and you look at something and you go what is it is it a single is it a double is it a triple is that a secret bit of information that you don't want people buying your beers to know what ABV they're getting. Oh, it's a surprise. Yeah. Is it a 4% or is it a 10%? Well, drink one or two of them and you'll find out. Yeah, when you can't stand up out of your chair, you, it might have been a 10%er. Uh, not a big fan of la, these uh, lackadaisical labels with no information on them, guys. Uh, so. They could do better than that. If they want to stay in business, they probably ought to. If this was sitting on the shelf or I shop, I wouldn't pick it up with no ABV on the label. Uh, only thing it says is a double dry hopped double IPA. Well, that could be anywhere from a seven and a half percent all the way up to whatever percent. Uh, so it does say it's a double IPA. So you know it should be at least a seven and a half percent or bigger. Untap says it's at eight percent. Beer Advocate doesn't have that information. They got a question mark. Ooh, and they all say it's no longer being brewed. So evidently, it is still being brewed. Uh, their commercial description says a fresh batch of Dreamy Draw brings fresh changes to. We took a holistic, holistic look at the this beer and decided to bring it just a bit more balanced simply by adjusting whirlpool hopping and timing of dry hop we were able to still bring galaxy intensity but in a more approachable format very soft and very drinkable and just hit you all over with this new more intense lot galaxy so galaxy hops evidently is what they viewed on this didn't I think they put that on the label unless they're just reusing the same labels and time to take money uh, massive tangerine tropical dank diesel I hope it don't have diesel <laughs> taste in it. Uh, passion fruit, crazy. This newest dreamy draw, double dry hop, double hoppy, double IPA was designed with all that in mind. An 8% super pale, hazy double IPA base brewed with under modified North American peel malt, flaked oats, and grain rind, unmalted blue beard, durum, whatever the hell that is. We're absolutely saturated with 2020 Galaxy and that 
and that's it. Could smell this beer all day, enjoy what Galaxy has to offer. Galaxy is a southern hemisphere hop, so usually it lends some spicy notes to the beer. Most of those southern hemisphere hops do to this guy anyway. You may pick up on something else, but I pick up on those spicy notes uh, that those hops bring out. So uh, that's it. Big 16 ounce plain Jane can with a stick on wraparound label with no information on it. All right. Very hazy coming out of the can here, guys. Might even end up with a New England style beer since they're claiming a whirlpool operation. That's what usually uh, the process is uh, for those New England style beers, I think. Because I've never done one. Alright. Huh. About a finger and a half head on there. And it does look like a New England style beer, guys. Very hazy. Looks like orange juice in the glass. Maybe a lighter color. Maybe a half and a half of grapefruit and orange. I don't see any light coming through it, guys. Uh, definitely looks like a New England style beer, anyway. To the nose we go! Yeah, has a very pleasant hop presence to this one, guys. I just wish these proofies would put the can on date so it'd be used by Best Buy, whatever by dates. I mean, uh, I know why they do it. They want to sell more beers. They want to sell more beers. If they give it a six month shelf life and, and say drink it by this day, which is six months, they've sold two months worth of beers past what I think it should be. So I don't know what they're giving it. I mean, a lot of people don't care. I mean, they'll, they'll buy a Budweiser that's a year old. It don't matter. But it has a date on it if they bother to look at it. But, and a lot of those beers get rotated where the craft beers do not. Tangerine, grapefruit, pine, maybe a hint of some uh, tropical fruit notes, has a nice dankness to it. It's a great smelling beer. A lot better than yesterday's uh, beer from this brewery, in my humble honest opinion. It all depends on what you like to drink though guys. I mean what this guy likes to drink is a whole lot different than a lot of other people what they like to drink. So if you're not a hop head and you're a, a lager pilsner kind of guy, you're not going to like what I like and vice versa. Smells good. Let's dive in. Cheers everybody. Cheers Neil. Thank you sir. This one looks like so far the best one out of the batch. To me. Just my opinion though. A little thin on the mouth, Bill, but it has a very pleasant, hoppy taste. Very, very nice. Very well done. Grapefruit, pine, maybe a hint of some stone fruit or mango or something. Nice tropical fruit notes. Some tangerine going on. It is a little on the thin side for an 8 percenter. Alcohol is well hidden though, we'll say that. Maybe a, just a tinge of it, but not much. Seems to be a tasty beer. I was hoping it was going to be. I really was. Back in pour going in. I don't see any kind of floaties or any kind of chunks or anything floating around in it. Seems to be a taste of beer. This may be something this guy would pick up uh, if it had a canned on date. <laughs> uh, that's a pleasant beer. I enjoy this. This has got a nice taste to it. Other than being a little thin, it's a very pleasant beer. So it's right out of the fridge. Let's go sip on it and see what we end up with. Alright guys, I'm back from sipping on it for quite a while now. It's at the room temperature. Tasty beer. Uh, I would buy this beer if it had a canned on date on it and was available here. Uh, I just find it very enjoyable. Other than a little thin mouthfeel, it's a well made beer. Uh, out of all the hot profile that I'm looking for and the aroma and the taste. Uh, but again, lack of information uh, from this brewery. Uh, they could do better. Uh, no ABV on the can and no canned on date on it. Drink by, best by, 
used by whatever by they just don't cut it with this guy anymore uh, I want to know when it was put in the package and if you can't do that I don't want to spend my money on your beer so that's just as plain as I can put it uh, but uh, I did appreciate Neil sending it to me uh, this was uh, the better of the two uh, Ren House beers that he sent me uh, and I think it's been the best beer so far out of his beer round package but it is the style that I, I like uh, it all depends on what you like to drink I keep saying that over and over and over and over again guys uh, if you like Pilsner's lagers fine if you like fruity beers fine if you like low ABV beers fine uh, it all depends on what what you want to drink uh, so uh, uh, you young cats have concession beers like I used to uh, those low, low ABV beers are uh, a good choice uh, but now that I can only have uh, a couple a day uh, I don't like those low ABV beers uh, it's not my cup of tea anymore uh, but to each their own and I've said that over and over and over again uh, uh, so give me a canned on date or a bottled on date and give me the ABV on the label so I can know what I'm drinking uh, even though it does say double IPA, I want to know what the ABV is. Seven and a half or is it ten and a half? So let me let me make that decision on the information that's on there. And it's not on there. So I probably would not purchase this beer if it was available here for those two reasons. No ABV on the can and no canned on date. So uh, I do think it's a well made beer, guys. Final chug. Awesome aroma. I mean it, it is a very nice New England style beer. So, very pleasant. Guys, if it had the ABV and the canned on date on it, it would be a solid A, maybe a little better. Very enjoyable. But since it has neither, uh, A minus. So uh, 90 for me on this one, guys. Uh, over to Beer Advocate. No score. And Untapped has it at 4.17. Don't understand why Beer Advocate doesn't have a score because 2,098 people have commented on this beer. So whether it's retired or not, and they re you know, redone the beer. Uh, misinformation on that site so another reason why it's going downhill it has been for a long time so I just don't know how they they stay afloat uh, it's, it's amazing to me so if you had dreamy draw from Red House Brewing especially the 2021 edition it's not retired it may have been at one time but uh, they've definitely they've redone it so if you had the new version or the latest edition let me know what you think till we meet again. Let's go see what's in the fridge.